Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Adam with Retro Repairs and it's time for another repair video today. So here I have a Sega Game Gear and I did a previous uh, repair on this where I dealt with the problem that it wasn't turning on. So that was mainly a clean and uh, just kind of spruce up video. But in this one, what I want to do is um, address a glaring concern with the Game Gear overall. So the biggest issue probably with the Game Gear is it requires an entire fistful of batteries in order to work. So I put in the $5 worth of batteries. Then we turn it on. It helps to put a game in. So I'm going to use Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Turn it on. Let's uh, crank up the brightness a bit. Oh, we got nothing. Maybe we'll just clean it. There we go. So the screen wasn't particularly great, but even when you were able to get a good angle on it, it's notably brighter right in the middle. Um, that's because they use a compact fluorescent bulb inside of it to, there we go, that's a little bit better, compact fluorescent bulb inside to actually get the backlight. Aside from being incredibly inefficient, um, on average, maybe six of these batteries will last you about five hours. Just wasn't a very good even backlighting. So I'm gonna install, um, a new LED backlight panel that I purchased from a place called Handheld Legend. Um, so I've ordered a few things from them and they're, uh, they're pretty good. They got a good selection of stuff. So this is the backlighting panel. And I've also ordered a new lens. So you might notice, you might not notice, but I don't know if we can pick that up on camera, but the, uh, the lens is pretty scratched up. So this is plastic. I've ordered a glass lens, which will go in and replace that. So I'm hoping that will look uh, quite a bit nicer. Yeah, so, uh, but first things first, we need to open this up. So let's uh, get right into that and let's crack her open. So I've uh, shown you how to open these in another video. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing again. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead to the point where we've got her open. Okay, so here we have the uh, the whole kind of assembly here. So once again, this all needs to come out. So I'm gonna remove all of these little screws which hold the board into place. And there we go. And again, skip ahead to when that's done. All right, so now that this is all disassembled, um, first thing we want to do is remove this reflector from the back of it. So I'm going to take off the screws that are holding that in place. And then this should lift kind of out like so, maybe. I think we need to take this bulb out first. So what we're gonna do next is desolder the uh, this big bulb that is acting as the backlight. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. Okay, so what we're gonna do, take this, flip it over, and there are two solder points that we need to remove. And that's right here and right here. Now if we flip it back over, oh, sorry, right here and right there, these two right there. So I'm gonna grab my desoldering braid, I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on this, put a little bit of flux on the desoldering braid, and then just apply some heat. Same thing to the other one. Again, just being careful of this 
ribbon connector. You might even want to kind of move it off to the side a little bit. Now, we should be able to pull this bulb completely out. Might have to wiggle it a little bit free. Use your tweezers if necessary. If it still doesn't quite release, you can always try this technique. Grab it from below, heat up the pins, and just pull it. And there we go. So this is the backlight that was used. It's an old compact fluorescent bulb. Really not very good, not very helpful, so we're just going to get rid of it. And put this reflector off to the side a little bit. And again, just being very careful with the screen that we don't bend it, break it, lose it, that type of thing. It's uh, connected with just this delicate ribbon connector here. So the next step is, um, again, some more desoldering. So there are some parts that we need to remove. Actually, I'm going to put uh, I'm put this back underneath, just so that I'm not scratching the screen. So there's some parts that we need to remove from here, and it's going to be this one, this, this, and that, and this resistor here. Um, I'm going to show a picture highlighting those so you can uh, screenshot that or whatever you need if you're following along. So. Let's flip this over and begin desoldering. So that's the first part, just fell right out. And then same thing for this transformer here. Okay, so one more thing you need to do in preparation is you need to bridge a, a joint here, and that's going to be, see this round space right there that you've removed? This used to be an inductor, I believe, and we just need to bridge that. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can use a piece of um, something like a leg from a resistor or something if the holes are clean enough so i'm going to try and do exactly that i'm going to come in i'm going to clean these holes up a bit more see if i can get a uh a resistor leg in there just to make it a nice solid easy connection so we'll come in from the back all right so what i've done i was able to get the leg in there so we're just going to flip it over helps to have tweezers or needle nose pliers to do this. Just bend it and stick it through the other side of this hole. And 
once it's through, just solder it into place. We're going to come in, cut these off. and then clean up the area with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so this next part is a very delicate and tricky part. What we need to do here is separate the screen from this plastic, uh, um, this little piece of plastic, whatever you call it, housing. Um, so to do that, you're gonna want a razor blade or something very, very sharp and thin to get in. So I have exactly that. If you have a craft knife or something, that will work great too. But I just have this thin little razor blade, so very carefully getting in here between the glass layer. We just want to cut the adhesive. I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. You have to be very careful not to damage this ribbon connector. You damage the ribbon connector and you may as well toss out the screen, it's not going to work. I'm sure you could also use heat to uh, get in here as well, but this seems to be working reasonably well. And there we go, so that will release out just like that. Um, you may want to go back and try and clean up some of the remaining adhesive, and you can use, you can probably just use isopropyl alcohol again. That's all I'm gonna use. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do here is take out the, the display here, or sorry, not the display, but the backlight, and this is what it's going to look like. There's um, some white film on the front and the back of it. The back side has tape, the front side does not. We're not actually removing anything off of it, so there's no layer to peel off or anything. So what I want to do is line this up right in the square where it's the screen is supposed to sit just like so it should sit just like that yep and then actually on this one you don't even need to make a mark you're supposed to make a mark here to indicate where on this you need to cut but it looks like this version already has a line here for me. So um, now I need to trim this. Just get my measurement one more time to be sure. Oh, what the heck. Okay, so I'm gonna put that off to the side. And now I'm gonna try and cut this. Did 
That's a problem. So that is not what I wanted to do. Ah, crap. So this plastic is extremely brittle. Um, Well, nope. I'm committed so far, so let's keep her going. There we go. So I'm going to find a better way to cut this side off. I'm going to probably get a serrated blade or something. I don't have a Dremel tool to cut through it, so I'm going to find another alternative. Okay, so this is what I've got here. Um, hopefully this will fit. Um, definitely not clean cuts, so a lesson to learn here is definitely get... I'm going to get a Dremel tool for next time I try something like this because this is just not a good... not a good job. So, live and learn, but um, moving on. So we're going to install these brackets and the reflector into place. So this will go right there. And then this one, these will go on that side. So I'm going to flip this over. Okay, so we can align the screen in here now. And now the trick is going to be getting this part lined up properly. So I believe it's going to go something like this part in there. That looks about right. Okay, so next step, gonna grab my screen, put it behind, or grab my backlight, put it behind the screen. It should kind of fit just like so, hopefully. And the screen will fit over top of it now. This is the tricky part because I think I actually need to trim back part of this plastic, which is very unfortunate. Yep, I do. Because that is not going to fit in. So I need to trim some of this back, and I think I'm actually going to try and file it back. So I'm going to trim that off camera, and I will be back. Okay, so I've filed this back, and I can now fit the backlight into that bracket. So once again, I'm just going to clean off the screen a little bit because I'm sure I've got some new dust and stuff on there. So I just want to get everything off that you can. And fold that back over. It should sit just like so. Everything looks to be in place. So the next step is how do we install this? So these wires are going to flip back to the back side and put this down again for the screen to sit on. So the black wire is going to be soldered into this spot right here. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Put 
put some fresh solder in there actually it's just not flowing nicely oh my solder iron turned off that's why There we go. Now the red one, we actually need to do an extra step here. So they included a resistor in this kit um, and I'm gonna grab a piece of heat shrink tubing. So what you need to do to start, I'm gonna put the short end of the resistor into the middle hole up at the top here. So there's five holes, one, two, three, four, five. It's going in the middle one, and then I'm going to solder that into place. Now, I'm going to trim this back a bit, throw the heat shrink tubing all the way up here, and solder this wire onto this resistor. So it can be helpful to tin the leg of the resistor first. Pull that all the way down, and then I'm going to fire up my hot air gun. should do the trick. So now that this is all kind of hooked up, time to test this. So let's uh, try and put this into place without bumping the screen loose. Okay, so we've got all, everything all aligned up. Just get everything out of the way of the posts. Um, need to screw down the board still. So I just want to flip this over and make sure that the screen looks like it's aligned. Looks all right. Um, may as well pop in a few batteries and just give it a quick test. Make sure that everything fires up before, um, before you go and really make it permanent. So. Fingers crossed. So that doesn't look, oh, there we go. But it looks like the backlight is not oriented properly. Let's double check that. Okay, so apparently the trick, which wasn't really uh, explained, is you have to align this backlight because there's a big bar at the top of it. But 
Oh, shit. So I'm going to push the light all the way up to the top if I can and actually going to loop the wires around this little bit of shielding here. That should hopefully help keep it in place a bit. Um, we do want to make sure that it's not going to be pinched by the post that's coming down so just going to provide enough of a loop there. but. There, that looks appropriate. There we go. Okay, so I think we're aligned. I'm not really a fan of this setup though because there's no real good way to line up the screen. Um, there's nothing that holds it in place. Um, you're supposed to cut away that plastic retainer, the white part, so I don't know, it's just not a really a good setup, but it is what it is. Um, what I'm unfortunately gonna have to do is use a couple little pieces of electrical tape kind of to just hold it where I need it to be so that I can flip it over and pin it in place with the screws. Unfortunately, there's really no other way. So, let's grab all of this. Of course I can't do that. Well, at least um, by pinning it up here, it seems to have, it's inadvertently kind of held everything together. So I might be able to get away with rebuilding everything this way. Mm, but I can't screw it in, so that won't work. I'm gonna have to remove these wires here. Maybe I can pop them in afterwards. Before I go much farther, um, one thing that I did say I wanted to do was replace the lens, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to pop the lens out. There's a good amount of adhesive holding that in, but lens is out, buttons are aligned. Okay, so we have reassembly, let's see. Okay, so that looks not too bad. So 
So brightness works pretty well. Let's check out the volume. All right, so I'm gonna put this all back together and then we will tackle this screen. Okay, so we're almost ready. Um, last step is gonna to be to try and get up as much of this leftover adhesive as we can. So get the big chunks with your fingers or with a tweezer and then little bits that you have trouble getting up. Um, just some isopropyl alcohol will do. Okay, so got that nice and cleaned up. So the last step now is um, adding this lens. So just gotta peel off the wrapper on it. And then this is really just peel and stick. It's not much to it. go line her up and push firmly there we have a nice fresh um, nice fresh game gear lens it looks pretty good I must say I'm gonna give this a general clean up just on the outside but let's uh, Let's fire up Sonic 2 again and just see how that looks all kind of put together. I must say it looks... Uh Looks not too bad at all. The light's pretty even across the whole thing. There is a little bit of a hot spot up at the top, but it is what it is. Let's uh, turn this down a bit. But I must say it does work. I'm not a fan of the installation, I'll be honest. I feel that it's really just not very, not very well planned out. It'd be nice if someone could maybe even 3d print some proper brackets so that you don't have to trim and you don't have to worry about lining up the screen and everything but once you get it set up i mean it looks not too bad the biggest perk is that this is gonna probably uh double your battery life i know a huge issue on the game gear was really bad battery life so getting double of that would be really nice i must say so that's going to be it for this video um hopefully that you could I will learn through some of my mistakes with this. I'm still not sold. I'm going to try it a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like the video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, and I got lots of different uh, repair type videos like this. So stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.